Hi, my name is Davy Hughes. I'm a conservationist and expert hunter with an insatiable appetite for adventure and the great outdoors. In this series, I'm going to take you along with me as I face some very different and exciting challenges. Join me as I discover some of the most spectacular and far-flung corners of the globe. Watch me fish Alaskan salmon, hunt and track, sled, kayak, and front up to a grizzly bear. Live life to the full, live it to the max. Come along for the ride. Come on, let's go. Since childhood, my dream has been to follow in the footsteps of my heroes, Speak, Bert and Stanley, and Samuel Baker, all hunters and explorers of the vast continent of Africa. My destination is the huge 55,000 square kilometre Salu Game Reserve in Tanzania, and my goal is to hunt the Cape Buffalo, one of the big five game animals, and probably the most dangerous. Of course, I'll need an experienced guide for this adventure. Unfortunately, I've got one of the best, Richard Bonham. He's been running safaris in this part of the world for over 30 years. Hello, Richard, how are you, mate? Yeah, really good to see you here. Fantastic. Yeah, what a great flight in. Yeah, it was a beautiful country. Did you go over the river there? Yeah, no, we did. We had one of the most awesome flights in. So oh, it was just great. fantastic. It's important to me that we go on the safari, not in the modern style, riding all the way in jeeps and sleeping in luxury lodges, but the way the first adventurers did it, on foot, with porters to carry all the necessary food and equipment from camp to camp. This will be longer, hotter and harder, but for me, it's the only way I could possibly do this. These guys are all locals. Not only will this provide a good income for them, they also get an equal share in any of the meat we kill. These are people who probably only eat meat once or twice a year. We're heading across the Rafiji River now. It's quite a deep, wide river. I've got a few uh, hippos floating about, so we'll just take a little care. What seems like a calm, peaceful river is a pretty good example of how you never take this country for granted. Richards just told me one of the porters who was to be on this trip was killed by a croc while he was fishing here just two days ago. We set off, but no sooner have we hit the bush than we find a dead elephant. A young male, poisoned or wounded by poachers, he's then escaped to die a slow death near the river. We have Nindi, a government game warden with us, and he notes the GPS coordinates of the carcass before he confiscates the tusks, so the poachers will get nothing from this animal. Over the next two weeks, we'll cover about 500 kilometres, crisscrossing the dried up bed of the Sandy River, where elephants come to drink, and beside which zebra, lion, and parlour, wildebeest, and a whole host of other creatures all hang out in the grassy plains and scattered forests. I'm not here to blaze away at anything and everything. What we kill, we eat. And we only eat what we need. Even if I don't get a single Cape buffalo, just having been here to experience this amazing place will have been well worth the trip. One really important thing is keeping silent. Once we're out there, all communications is done in whispers. Um, you know, if you want to draw my or Kani's attention, do it either with a loud whisper or a click of the fingers or and that'll, that'll draw attention to the fact that you've seen something. Okay. Sunrise, and Nindy's taking his morning dose of snuff. <coughs> <laughs> oh, the old man, this country, we, we use like this, to smoke this, because our vents, or our, our brain, is very weak. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you do that, Indy? <laughs> our goal this morning is to get on the track of buffalo, preferably a herd. Just down in the brush, hidden away in a little corner. There's a young and 
Nala just sitting so still, not moving. Come and see. Left there for safety by its mother, it won't move, but it's in danger of being found by a leopard if it stays there too long. We leave the river to search into the forest, and Carney soon has us on the track of that bull again. This is fresh, this is last night. Then, in the trees just ahead, we hear some movement. There's a couple of buffalo just through right there. My first buffalo. My mouth's dry. Has he seen us? I can't take the shot with the foliage in the way. Even a twig could divert the bullet and only wound him. And just like that, he's gone. <sighs> that was a good looking bull too. Nice big boss, meaning he was at least seven years old. Ah oh well, tomorrow's another day. Last night, about three o'clock, <clears throat> felt something small crawling over me. I thought, oh, it's just a bug, so I flipped it away. And two seconds later, there was another bug, flipped that away, and then I thought, oh, there's, there's another bug, and that bug bit me. I turned the torch on, and the place was infested with ants, the walls, the roof, all inside my sleeping gear, the whole lot, and they bite. But, um, hey, it's cool to see so many ants, isn't it? The safari ants have somewhere to go, and so do we. I'm about to get stuck in the shit, literally. So this is the first thing that happens, the, the outside starts crusting over. Um, a lot depends if it's been in the shade or in the sun. You see these little holes? They're created by little um, bugs. Um, eventually dung beetles will come as well. And once you start seeing these holes in, that'll give you another um, gauge to, to measure it by. How long before the um, bugs start putting the holes in? It can be 20 minutes. Ah. Our trail takes us from water hole to water hole, because these are where all the wildlife never stray too far from. That's a water monitor lizard, known locally as a kufu atila. Richard finds the head of a buffalo that's been killed by a lion, and the most interesting thing about it are the growths coming out of the skull. Not a plant, but the larval stage of a horn moth. It only lays its eggs in the horns of dead animals. As the morning heats up and the temperature starts to climb, it's quite important that you stop and rehydrate every hour or two. Just get yourself into the shade of a big tree and just have a wee bit of a snooze and drink some hot and sweet tea. The tea kettle is always at the ready on this expedition, and it never takes our guys long to find a shady spot, set up the camp, and get the fire started and a brew going. Ha, ah, got him. There's a tetsu full of blood. So a lot of people say they're conservationist best friend, because they keep domestic stock out of um, gay areas. They kill domestic stock. They don't affect um, wildlife. No um, threat with um, the sleeping sickness from Tetsi's fire yeah. around here? No, not the variety that affects humans. 
After lunch I snooze, while Richard cleans his 470 Nitro. This classic double barreled rifle once belonged to Captain Ritchie, Chief Game Warden of Kenya. It's a beautiful gun, nearly 100 years old. Like beached whales, on a bed of leaves we rest. Eating bacon, sausages and hard boiled egg sandwiches. <laughs> Even though we wait till late afternoon to carry on, the heat is still fierce, 54 degrees. This is the sand river that we're hunting and it's actually around about 95% of the year. It's just like this and then the rest of the time in the wet season fills up with water. Certainly in the heat of the day, the sun reflects off the sand and it does make it for a pretty warm sort of a day. But Richard's got just the thing to quench a thirst, wild pomegranate. You bring a knife. Nindy arrives just as Carney, Richard and I all swallow a mouthful. They're the poisonous ones. No, he said this is what the poachers use to um, poison elephant. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Shit, the candy's all ready. <laughs> Panic. I don't know how you make yourself sick. Uh, you, 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 you do water for water. Yeah, well, the poison. I'm about ready to panic. <laughs> I don't believe it. It was all just a joke instigated by Richard. Oh, I'm going to be sick on you. <laughs> yeah, and a whole lot of them were in on it. <laughs> OK, well. There's very little day left, so it's back to camp for some non-poisonous food. Louis's making bread, baked in the pot on the fire, yeah. and they turn out as beautiful rolls. We take um, water for granted because it comes out of a tap, but around here you've got to actually dig for water. We're going to add a little bit of chlorine just to make sure it's nice and clean, but it's pretty good water, let me tell you that. Hi. The day ends with the distant echo of a lion coming to the nearby waterhole to drink. Be great if he comes close to camp, we can check him out. Next morning, we're up with the bats. While we were asleep, the lion we heard came very close to camp. And we see plenty of its prints down by the waterhole. He's also found buffalo sign. A small group of animals, by the way. Following Cape Buffalo into thick bush requires extreme caution. Buffalo, in my opinion, is one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. It's a cunning and aggressive animal, which can outflank you, hide, and then charge. Every year, there are several attacks where hunters are gored and even killed. Not before we wait out this bad weather that's closed in fast. The rain's coming now. We'll have an instant regrip here in a couple of days. We really have the roll up. It came in very quick. A little bit of lightning. So we've ducked under this tree. I don't know, what sort of tree is this, Richard? This is a Salvadora. Salvadora tree, which um, provides some pretty good cover from the rain, actually. So we'll just sit this one out. Along with a couple of giant millipedes to keep us company. That process of fire, rain, 
than regrowth within days is the natural rhythm of the African bush. End of another day, a long day really, but um, quite entertaining to say the least. A um, couple of contacts and heavy brush, which was pretty exciting. It's good to see the camp. I'm kind of looking forward to uh, getting these wet clothes off and having a little drink. The morning of our eighth day brings mist and a kind of lethargy to the camp. Everyone's finding it hard to get going, except for me, I'm off to the toilet. But once the sun arrives, we're off. We're gonna head up um, these dry riverbeds and see if we can uh, cut tracks of the herd. We saw a herd that um, had come through yesterday on the way into camp and uh, some of the porters had actually got in amongst them and they reckon it was quite a large and significant herd, so if we can catch tracks of that and just work the herd, work in and out and see if we can select ourselves a good bull, then uh, we could have a pretty fun sort of a day here. But first, some more bushcraft from Richard. This is the coal gate of the bush. You just chew the end of it and get into a brush and then you just scrub your teeth. It become all fibrous, just chew it. As we head away from the river into the forest, we hear an approaching engine. A government spotter plane passes overhead, looking for elephant poachers, hoping to scare them off. If there are poachers around, we want to know where they are, because we sure as hell don't want to walk into them. That'll be a firefight. No sign of anything. Had a good look around, but we'll just keep going and try and hit the river down here. That's a lot of vultures. This is over to kill, just up here in the, in the grass. Which we'll approach reasonably carefully. No poachers, but a dead elephant butchered for its ivory. More, more. Another one there. And two more. Killed in the last day or so. Thousands of tembo are poached annually and record amounts of illegally traded ivory has been seized after being transported through Tanzanian and Kenyan ports. Well, as you can see here, this is a very freshly poached elephant. It's just gone straight down, so more than likely brain shot. But um, very fresh. Very fresh. We've just come across uh, three dead elephants. Such a bloody travesty. And the crazy thing is, it wouldn't take a lot of money to, to really put a halt to a lot of this poaching. For a start, it would be bloody good if the people that buy the ivory would stop buying it. Maybe it's about time as a planet we started waking up and saying, what are we doing for greed? Finding those three young elephants has dampened our mood, and we call it a day. Both Richard and I don't have much to say that evening. We just stare into the fire, looking for inspiration there. Red skies mean sunrise. We've been in the bush nine days, and this is the last full day we can hunt. If I don't succeed in getting a buffalo today, well, I just can't think about that. Very soon we come across buffalo sign. I'm hoping we might be close, but Carney, of course, knows better. He's seen a dung beetle burrow. He's been able to do all that work. The indicator that we're quite a long way behind them. Still, we are on their trail, and once again I get to marvel as Carney tracks their sign through dense bush, walking himself for every twist and turn the herd has made. Got some good fresh sign here.
Now it's a waiting game. I'll only shoot an old bull. And they usually stay at the back of the herd. Richard's put a follow-up shot in straight after mine. My shot felt good. The bull's gone into thick bush. We've got to be really careful now. This is a dangerous time. He might still be alive, and as we approach him, he can get up and charge. So we'll try and come in from behind him. Well done, man. <sighs> Looks a lot bigger in here than it does out there in the open. <laughs> it's an East African custom to tie a knot in the animal's tail to ward off dysentery. <laughs> the porters celebrate a clean kill and the gift of meat for their families. Celebrations that will go long into the night. I'll never forget the characters I've met on this trip and the friendships I've built. I feel I have shared the same challenges and triumphs of my heroes, walking in their footsteps two centuries later. Next week, I'm off to the Kingdom of the Ice Bear in the Arctic Circle, where snowmobiles, dog sleds, reindeer, and the Doomsday Vault await. It's another adventure, so come along for the ride. <laughs>